Hello and welcome to my garage. In this video, we're going to be taking not one, not two, not three, but four leaf blowers and combining them all together into one super awesome project. Now, I'm not just going to go crazy and start messing around with stuff in my garage. I'm going to be scientific about this. So that's why I brought my whiteboard. Today, we're talking about the commutative property. Now, a quick walk down memory hall to math class reminds us that the commutative property means that the order in which variables are multiplied should not change the outcome. So A times B will give us the same result as B times A. So for what we're doing here, will four one-cylinder engines from these leaf blowers give us the same result as one, sorry, four-cylinder engine. That's what we're going to find out today. So stick around and uh, find out. <laughs> the engines that I've chosen for this experiment are still BG55 engines from their standard leaf blower. Um, these are two-stroke single-cylinder engines. Um, each cylinder has a, a displacement of 27 cc's. It produces about 0 0.9 horsepower, just under one horsepower, and each engine weighs about nine pounds. Um, I forget how I got the first engine. Um, I think someone just gave me a, a leaf blower for free. They were like, it doesn't run. If you can get it running, it's yours. So I took it, I cleaned the carburetor, and magically it works. So I was like, hey, cool, free engine. Um, and I've kind of always had this idea of combining multiple engines into one bigger engine. Um, I don't really know of anyone else who's successfully like done this on YouTube, aside from a, a certain mad lad across the pond. Uh, shout out to him. I found a couple of old S1 250 triple engines. So what I'm going to do is cut them both in half and join them together to make it into a four cylinder. So two and a half cylinders plus one and a half cylinders equals four cylinder. I'll have a quick look to see how it fits. And I'm really pleased with that. And after a little bit of machining, that's going to fit just perfect. Um, and I mean, other people have tried to couple engines together um, and have like clutches or have them drive like sprockets or something. And they all drive one big chain and the chain drives the wheel. Um, but no one's like combined the actual blocks, at least if they have, it's very rare and difficult to find people who have done that. So that's what I wanted to test here. Um, and I mean, who doesn't love the sound of a small displacement in line four screaming away at really high RPM? should be interesting if nothing else um, so basically I'm just taking one engine adding three more to see if it's you know if, if the benefits are multiplied in a linear fashion so if each engine makes 0 0.9 horsepower at the end will our four cylinder make 3.6 horsepower exactly four times will it make a little bit more a little bit less you know, will it make four horsepower or only three horsepower? You know, what's going to happen? So at the end of all this, I want to do some kind of testing to be able to quantify um, and get like actual scientific, you know, air quotes, scientific results of what this looks like and how it performs. And I also have um, a spare one. So we will have a stock single cylinder leaf blower engine, and then we can compare that with our custom modified special four cylinder engine. So that is the plan. We're gonna be doing a lot of custom fabrication. I don't know if we'll get to this, uh, this video or next video, um, but if you wanna see more, definitely subscribe to the channel. I have more videos queued and on the way. A lot of this footage was filmed last year and um, I'm just now getting around to editing it and putting it into videos that are easy to watch. Um, so I will be releasing multiple videos. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those future videos. Okay, so I'm using some Dawn dish soap and, well, yeah, and a brake cleaner 
And this rinse bucket with just water in it. It's got some suds in it now. Uh, to clean it, I've got everything taken apart. Um, the crankshaft and the piston, you have to like push pins out with like presses and stuff and I don't want to do that. And it's just going to go back together. Um, There's just some carbon on top. Uh, but all the oil should be taken care of. Um, I will get some good gasket sealer and reseal this before we get too crazy with it. I also have extra material in case these gaskets are all worn out. Um, but that's two engines cleaned. Um, so I'll turn the camera off just so I can get some good work done and get the other ones done quickly. But I'm going to need more brake cleaner. So trip to the store. All right, everything's all taken apart, cleaned. So we've got our four engines in pieces. I'm gonna lay it out on the bench over there. And um, I don't know. Right, so here's engine number four. Just let it kneel down. Top seems okay. Bottom is definitely moving around too much. That bearing is shot. Same thing with that one. So this one's basically totally messed up. Uh, piston rings are a little frozen. So that's engine number four. Engine three. Let's see. Top is good. Crankshaft is good. These aren't too bad. A little rough, but not the end of the world. This one, uh, this one, the crank is in, or the, uh, the piston and the connecting rod are in great shape on this one. Yeah, the bearing's a little bit in there. Oh, this one's frozen. Yeah, this does not want to turn at all. This is perfect. This is wonderful, actually. One is perfect. Two. Eh, I think two is good. Three is really messed up. We've got the large end. That bearing is totally shot. Uh, even up here at the top, it's pretty loose. And both bearings are shot. So three, we might need just an entirely new crankshaft assembly with piston. And number four, piston and tie rod are okay but we need bearings. Okay. So, let's go order some parts. Oh, yes. Look at that. Starting to take shape. Oh, yeah. Can the camera still even see? No, it cannot. Okay. Let me unscrew this and then start over because I am a silly dum-dum. Okay. Okay. Let's try her again. This time from the top. All right. So we'll put you over there. You. Right here. You. Right here. And you. Right here.
Okay, so currently if you took four engines and you just put them all together, crankshaft to crankshaft to crankshaft to crankshaft, you'd get this. You'd get four one-cylinder engines because that's what it is. But um, for this, I'm thinking um, we have our flywheel. I don't want to have four flywheels and then just have them stuck together because that's not a single engine. You know, a single engine has a solid crankshaft or as close as you can get to a solid crankshaft. So for the coils and for the ignition, I want to try and push these together as much as possible. So if we remove all the little magnetos or coil packs, um, if you could refer to them technically. Sorry, I just totally punched the camera so hard it almost fell over. <laughs> Apologies, I did not mean to assault you. Okay, so if we kind of put those over here and we do like a front view, as this goes around in a circle, if we have all of our coils like this, as this rotates, we're going to have just a nice even firing order. I can't really see this one. We're going to have a nice even firing order, so it'll go first cylinder, second cylinder, third cylinder, fourth cylinder. Not in that order, but um, I can just extend these and then have one single plate uh, that kind of mounts on the front here. Normally this mounts there. This would be here, spinning around every time it goes past. It uh, trips um, the fancy electronics that are in here that make it spark. Um, don't ask me, I'm not an electrical engineer. Um, magnet goes by, it makes spark. I can, I can work with that. So if we have four of them, it'll go by and make spark four times. So, with these out of the way and all kind of condensed to one side, um, which is kind of like our, our timing side, I guess. So just the, the angle that we put these will affect our timing. Um, so now, we could theoretically push these closer together if we don't worry about the crankshafts. Um, I'm gonna use, um, I, I, I bought two more <laughs> um, parts ones because um, some of the parts on these were bad and it's discontinued so you can't buy new parts. So I just bought more leaf blowers off of eBay. Um, don't judge me. This is my project. I can do what I want. <laughs> um, so I'll use these to demonstrate. We have one right here. So this is where our flywheel would go. This is where our coil pack would normally go. There's a nice little cutout. Um, but instead, we're going to be pushing these together. Um, so if we could do this. Now we can get it. I want to try and get the, uh, the cans or the cylinders, I guess, as close together as I can. Um, right here you can see the mounts for the uh, magnetos are just running into the fins. Sorry this one's so dirty, you can see why I'm not using it. Um, but it's just running into the fins, at least this, uh, this top one. So um, if we can get them, I don't know if they'll be this close together, but I really don't want to cut these off because these are nice mounting points. Um, because once this is finished, um, it's I want to put it in stuff, so I need mounting points. Um, so I'm going to, instead of cutting off these nice convenient mounting points, I'm going to just trim the fins. I'm not going to cut them off completely. It should still have plenty of cooling since it's air-cooled. I'm just slightly reducing the surface area of a few fins. So yes, cooling will be slightly less, but I mean, who cares? It, it might be in an application where it's moving and getting more airflow, so it'll be totally fine. Uh, but I think reducing the surface area by shaving two fins is not going to have a major impact. So um, let's do that and see how it turns out. And then we can uh, come up with a different solution for crankshafts. But these are going to have to get cut and shortened so we can kind of put them closer, closer together. Yes. <clears throat> and with that, we are going to end this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like below. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of it. Um, I upload about once a month, but it's not on any kind of consistent schedule, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I put up my next video. Until then, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!